السلام علیکم رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ایوری ون الحمد للہ رب العالمین میں اللہ مرسی بی اپون ایوری ون الرحمن الرحیم از موسٹ گریشیس موسٹ مرسفل اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ گیو اس دس بیوٹیفل کلام الحمد للہ گیو اس دیز بیوٹیفل منٹس دس ٹائم ٹو کانٹمپلیٹ آن ہز آیات دس از ہز مرسی انڈیڈ وی آسک اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ دیٹ وی are guided by him always inshallah ameen nahmaduhu wa nasalli ala rasulihi alkareem amma baad fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin indeed all praise is due to allah we praise him and seek his help and forgiveness we seek refuge in allah from the souls evils and our wrong doings him who Allah guides, no one can misguide, and he whom he misguides, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah. There is nobody wor- worthy of worship except for Allah, Allah alone without any partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ameen O my Lord, open for me my chest and ease my task for me Loosen the knot, the defect from my tongue so that they understand my speech Surah Taha, Surah number 20, Ayat 25 to 28 By Allah's supreme mercy we begin the 23rd juz of the quran majid the 23rd juz of the quran contains surah yasin from ayat 22 till its end surah as-saffat surah as-sad in its entirety and surah zumar up to ayat number 31 alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin indeed allah is supreme this is his wonderful kalam Surah Yaseen, Surah Safat, Surah Saud, and Surah Zumar are all Makkan Surahs. Alhamdulillah, Surah Yaseen, we began yesterday, is Surah number 36. This Surah was revealed in Makkah and consists of 83 verses. The title consists of two letters of the Arabic alphabet, Yaseen. Let's look at Ayat 39 of Surah Yaseen. And the moon. We have determined for it phases until it returns appearing like the old date stock. And as for the moon, we have ordained for its stages till it becomes again as an old dry palm branch. These are the two translations here. Allah wa Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful, so kind. He has taken care of everything for us to live in this world in a more easier way. He has given us this air, this oxygen, Allahu Akbar, this light, Alhamdulillah, day and night, Alhamdulillah. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this ayat speaks about the moon and the moon and its phases. And as we look up at the moon at different times of the, of the month, we see that it has different shapes. It takes about 27 days and 8 hours for the moon to complete one revolution around the earth. At the same time, while revolving around the earth, the moon rotates around itself. Subhanallah. Because of this, we always see the same side of the moon. In a lunar calendar, a month is the period between two consecutive new moons. Since the exact period between two new moons is 29 days, 12 hours and 44 minutes and 3 seconds, a month in a lunar calendar is either 29 days or 30 days depending on its appearance of the moon night. Alhamdulillah, we are Muslims and we, the Islamic dates are followed by the moon, the lunar calendar. The Islamic calendar was introduced in 632 by Prophet peace be upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Isn't it amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this beautiful moon to compute our days with and our nights with and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put, you can say, a calendar right on the sky so that we can have our timings all set for us, our days we can understand, Allahu Akbar, 
and how calculated and how precise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this moon go revolve around the earth. While the moon is revolving around the earth, the earth revolves around the sun, subhanAllah. So when the moon completes one full revolution around the earth and comes to the same point where it had started, the position of the sunlight changes and the moon's shape as we perceive it has changed. So the moon completes one full revolution around the earth and comes to the same point from where it had started. The position of the sunlight changes and the moon's shape as we perceive it has changed. And this is, subhanAllah, this is the calculation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how precise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made everything. What we need to do, what we need to learn from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they, this creation of Allah follows the commandments of Allah. What Allah has ordered it to do, it does. And so we as humanity need to also do uh, what Allah has asked us to do and be grateful for all the gifts Allah has given us to make our life easier. Allahu Akbar, how wonderful is Allah, how kareem is Allah, Allahu Akbar. We have 12 months and Alhamdulillah, uh, the Hijri months are Muharram, Safar, Rabbi al Awwal, Rabbi Thani, Jamaad al-Ula, Jamaad al akhirah Rajab, Shaban, and we're in the month of Ramadan, Alhamdulillah. Shawal comes next, Zul Qada and Zul Hijjah. And these are the beautiful months that Allah has for us, Alhamdulillah. And Allah says in the Quran, Indeed, the number of months with Allah is 12 lunar months in the decree of Allah since the day He created the heavens and the earth, of which four are sacred. Alhamdulillah, as we know, the sacred months are Muharram, Rajab, Zul Qada, and Zul Hijjah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. How many of Allah's blessings are we going to deny? How many of Allah's blessings we are not going to acknowledge? May Allah make us of such that are grateful for each and everything Allah has put together for us. Allah Akbar. Let's look at the next ayat from Surah Yasin, ayat number 47. And when it is said to them, spend from that which Allah has provided for you, those who disbelieve say to those who believe, should we feed one if Allah had willed, he would have fed? You are not but in clear error. A very sad fact, a very sad statement by people who are arrogant, who are selfish, who are greedy, who are uncaring, who don't care about anyone else but themselves. And when it is said to them, spend from that which Allah has provided for you, those who disbelieve say to those who believe, should we feed one whom, if Allah willed, he would have fed? You are not but in clear error. So these people are saying that why should we give to the poor? Why should we give zakat or sadqa, khairat, anything. Why should we give anything to the poor? Because if Allah wanted, he would have fed them himself. But what is not understood by so many is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given enough to this universe, enough, enough to this world. What he wants to see from us is that we care for others, that we share with others, that we distribute to others, that we transport goods from one place to another. Do you know right now in this world, there is tremendous abundance of Allah's provisions. Only the distribution is not proper, but and though that distribution has to be done. And Allah wants to see us do that. Meaning, there are countries that have abundance, they throw it in the sea, there's so much of crop. Instead, if they actually put it in storage and then put it in a freezer and then um, put it on a ship and then send it to the countries that are lacking, how much reward they would get and how everyone would be able to eat. The same way for our homes. Some homes have lots of goods, lots of provisions, lots of food, and other homes there is poverty. So what do we have to do? We have to 
identify those people, meet with those people, and distribute what we have from us to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be sharing, caring, people who distribute to others, people who reach out to others, people who take care of others, and be, you know, Allah wants us to be involved in, in and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a chance to earn reward by giving to others, by taking care of others. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be such that are always in an understanding that maybe there are people who need something. Maybe there is something that I can do to help. Maybe there is something that I can contribute to. And maybe there is something that I can do to benefit others. Alhamdulillah, maybe I can do something so that my contribution would be such that will make the other person's life easier. This is the type of people Allah wants in this world. Allah has given abundance to this world. We need to be moving. We need to be working. We need to be sharing. We need to be caring. We need to be uh, transporting things from one place to another. Giving, if giving from one place that has more to a per place that has less. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in so many ayat in the Quran Majid has asked us to take care of the needy, to take care of those who have less to take care of the underprivileged, to take care of the orphans, to take care of the traveler, to take care of the widows. So let us be people who are aware that we can actually contribute much more to the people who have less. And let us be of the people that understand that Allah is giving us an opportunity to earn reward by helping others. And let us always know that Allah has given abundance in this world. It is we that need to share. Inshallah. Ameen. Let's look at a few ahadith. Um, Rasul Karim sallallahu alayhi wa said, The most loved food to Allah is that which is touched by many hands, which means is shared. Sayyid at taghrib wa tahrib 2123. Let's look at another beautiful hadith. Jabir reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The food of one person is enough for two, the food of two is enough for four, and the food of four is enough for eight. Sahih Muslim 2059. Allahu Akbar. Let's look at another hadith. None of you will believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. This is our beautiful Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam letting us know to care for others, to share with others. Allahu Akbar. What a beautiful deen. What a beautiful way to live. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to follow these beautiful guidelines. Ameen. Let's look at uh, ayat 55 to 58 of Surah Yaseen. Verily, the dwellers of paradise that day will be busy in joyful things. They and their wives will be in pleasant shade, reclining on thrones. They will have therein fruits of all kinds and all that they will ask for. It will be said to them, Salamun, peace be on you, a word from the Lord, the most merciful. Allahu Akbar. What more does anybody want than for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say Salam? Peace to us. Ayat 58. And peace, a word from the merciful Lord. Salamun kawlam mir rabbir rahim. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who hear these words in Jannah. Ameen. Let's go on to the next surah. Surah as Safat, surah number 37. This surah was revealed in the last stage of the middle Makkan period when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions were passing through very difficult and discouraging circumstances. It contains 182 verses and its title is taken from the first verse. Ayat number one, by those angels lined up in rows. Ayat number two, and those who drive the clouds. Ayat number three, and those who recite the message. Ayat number four, indeed your God is one. 
these are the attributes of the angels lining up to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or waiting for his command. And by those angels ranged in ranks or rows, by those angels who drive the clouds in a good way, by those angels who bring the book and the Quran from Allah to mankind, this is Tafsir ibn Kathir, verily your ilah, your God is indeed one Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by his angels that the pagans belief in multiple gods is false and wrong and that the God of the universe is one. So Alhamdulillah, here Allah swore for the same purpose to convince the pagans of the oneness of God and dispel their fanciful belief in multiple gods. It should be noted that Allah may swear by his creation because he is the creator and owner of all things existing in the universe. But we are forbidden to swear by any of his creations. We may only swear by the creator. The reason is that when you swear by a thing, you make it a witness. Obviously, none can be a witness except Allah because he alone is the knower of the unseen. Asan al-Bayan. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we're seeing how the angels are so obedient, how they stand waiting for the command, how organized they are, how disciplined they are, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning them. Um, this is the beauty of the angels, Allah Akbar. And we have so much to learn from the angels. We have to be dutiful to Allah. We have to be obedient to Allah. We have to, when we are in namaz, when we are doing performing our salah, and the men in congregation especially, their rows should be evened out. Their saf should be evened out. They should be standing with discipline, with dignity, with humbleness. Just so much to learn from these beautiful angels, this creation of Allah, this obedient creation of Allah. Hadith uh, is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Angels were created from light. Jinns were created from smokeless flame of fire. And Adam, Adam Alayhi Salaam, was created from that which you have been told, which is sounding clay, like the clay of the pottery. Muslim, Riyaz al 1846. Allah's beautiful creation. This is our one Allah, one and true creator of the universe. He creates as he wills. Allah Akbar. Let's go on to ayat number 99 of Surah as safat And then he said, Indeed, I will go to where I'm ordered by my Lord. He will guide me. This is Ibrahim al-Islam speaking. And he is saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide me. And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives so much to us without asking and truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with so many things we never even asked for this is the majesty of Allah but one thing we must ask for and will be given if we if we beg Allah for it if we strive for it and that is guidance Ibrahim al is saying and then he said indeed I will go where I'm ordered by my Lord and he will guide me to rely on Allah that he will guide us to beg Allah to guide us that is what we need to do this is the sunnah of all the prophets and then we see in ayat 102 the biggest test of Ibrahim al-Islam and when he reached with him the age of exertion he said oh my son indeed I have seen a dream that I must sacrifice you, so see what you think. He said, O my father, do as you are commanded. You will find me, if Allah wills, of the steadfast. Subhanallah, this is the biggest test that anyone can go through, a father can go through. Father, Ibrahim alayhi salam is being asked to sacrifice his son, Ismail alayhi salam. You know, when prophets see a dream, it is, and they, and then Ibrahim al-Islam saw it a few days, and he 
it is such that it is a command from Allah and Ibrahim Islam knew that Ibrahim Islam knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking him to sacrifice his son Ismail Islam someone he dearly loved someone that he prayed for someone that was born much late in Ibrahim Islam's life when he was old Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks Ibrahim Islam to sacrifice him and look at the reply of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam, O oh my father, do as you are commanded. You will find me, if Allah wills, of the steadfast. You know, we, alhamdulillah, we talk about Ibrahim alayhi salam's sacrifices all his life. He sacrificed everything for the will, for the pleasure of Allah. Since he was a child, he tried to explain to his father, you know, why do you worship idols? Why do you carve these idols? What are they going to give you? There is only one Lord. How, in, how he explained it in his family, how he explained the oneness of Allah to his community, how he explained the oneness of Allah all around, wherever he traveled, whichever country he went to. Allah Akbar. And all the sacrifices, you know how they threw him in the fire and how he had to go from one place to another, all the sacrifices that Ibrahim al-Islam made. And here, the biggest sacrifice, and that is to, um, you know, slaughter his son. And so, look at the sacrifice of Ismail al-Islam also. He is such a patient, forbearing child. And his sacrifice is that, Allah, I give myself to you. If you are asking my father to sacrifice me, then you will find me steadfast. You will find me of those that obey you, that obey the commandment. Allah wa akbar. What a beautiful son and what a beautiful father. Allah wa akbar. Let's look at the ayat from 101 of Surah Safat to 111 right now. As the story is, so we gave him good tidings of a forbearing boy. News of Ismail alayhi salam, subhanallah. And in ayat number 102, and when he reached with him the age of exertion, he said, O oh my son, indeed I have seen in a dream that I must sacrifice you, so see what you think. He said, O oh my father, do as you are commanded. You will find me, if Allah wills, of the steadfast. Ayat number 103. And when they had both submitted, he put him down his forehead. Ayat 104 and 105. We called on him, O oh Ibrahim, you have fulfilled the vision. Indeed, we thus reward the good doers. 106, 107. Indeed, this was a clear trial, and we ransomed him with a great sacrifice. 108. And we left for him favorable mention among the later generations. 109. Peace be upon Ibrahim. 110. Indeed, we thus reward the good doers. 111. Indeed, he was of our believing servants. Subhanallah. This is the beautiful story, the beautiful sacrifice of Ibrahim al Islam and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then, of course, sent a ram to be sacrificed and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved this beautiful deed of these beautiful prophets Sayyidina Ibrahim al Islam and Sayyidina Ismail al Islam that all Muslims every year perform this deed of sacrificing an animal in the remembrance of Ibrahim al Islam during Hajj Allah wa Akbar and how generations and generations are going to remember this beautiful sacrifice that even Ibrahim al-Islam was even ready to sacrifice his son for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The devotion, the sacrifice, the love of Allah was all there. What we need to reflect on when we look at these ayat is how strong is our devotion? How strong is our love? How much of Allah's commandments do we obey? 
what is it that we love that we are also ready to sacrifice for Allah's sake? What are we doing in our lives to improve on our connection with Allah? What are we doing in our lives to spread this message of Allah to others? May Allah make us of those who are devoted to Allah. Ameen. Let's look at ayat number 180 of Surah Safat. Exalted is your Lord, the Lord of might, above what they describe. Peace be upon the messengers, and all praise be to Allah alone, the Lord of the worlds. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. All these beautiful prophets, all these beautiful messengers described in Surah Safat and throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Exalted is your Lord, the Lord of might, above what they describe, and peace be upon the messengers, and praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges all his messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala values them and honors them. And truly, all praise and all thanks is due to Allah for sending us these beautiful messengers. Alhamdulillah. Truly, Allah is our Rahman, our Rahim. With Allah's mercy, let's go on to Surah Saud, Surah number 38. This surah was revealed in Makkah during the social boycott of Prophet Muhammad wasallam and his family by Quraysh. It consists of 88 verses and its title is taken from the letter Saud of the Arabic alphabet. Surah Saad demonstrates in its clearest way the great worth of showing submission to Allah through returning to the truth without stubbornness. At-Tahir wa Tanweer of Ibn Ashur 23-202-203 Let's look at ayat number 29. This is a blessed book which we have revealed to you O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that they might reflect upon its verses, and that those of understanding would be reminded. Allah subhanahu wa taala is calling this book Mubaraka, and then Allah subhanahu wa taala saying that we need to reflect on it. We need to reflect on this book. It is a blessed book, full of wisdom, full of guidance full of solutions to all problems, Allahu Akbar. We must reflect on it. And in these small series and small reflections, we're trying to do that. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for any mistakes we have made and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us reflect on these ayat in a most wonderful way. And uh, as we know, the best uh, Tafsir of an ayat is another ayat of the Quran and then the ahadith of Rasul Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Akbar. And so, alhamdulillah, as we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us all, all humanity to reflect, all humanity to reflect on these ayat, we must think ourselves also with the guidance of the tafasir from the ulama, the scholars, and then our reflection on it as to Allah Akbar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, so this is a blessed book which we have revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that they might reflect upon its verses and that those of understanding would be reminded. So may Allah make us of those who understand that we need to reflect, we need to ponder and contemplate, we need to study these ayat, we need to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking from us, what he wants from us. And we have to understand that we have to be totally of those who are seekers of truth, inshallah. Ameen. Let's look at ayat number 62 of Surah Saad. Alhamdulillah. And they will say, why do we not see men whom we used to count among the worst? This is the depiction Allah is giving us, uh, showing us the future, taking us in time travel of the people that are actually in hell and they're looking for the people that they used to make fun of, the believers. These disbelievers now are present in hell and looking for the believers who they used to make fun of. The, the disbelievers used to look down upon the believers as bad people in the world. 
they will look bewildered and they will find only themselves and their guides in hell but will not find any trace of those people to whom they used to talk badly about in the world and whom they used to mock in their meetings for talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the hereafter. Ayat 63, it is because we took them in ridicule or has our vision turned away from them. Truly in this life, when we have good reminders, when we have good um, people around us who tell us good things and then we make fun of them and we ridicule them, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us that in the end, those people who ridicule good people will be in hell and truly the good people will not be with them for sure. And we look at 64, indeed that is truth, the quarreling of the people of fire. As we know, when we see the contrast between uh, Jannah and Jahannam between hell and paradise we see that there's all peace in paradise all peace in Jannah and here there is all chaos and there's fire there's all this bickering all this arguing and indeed that is the truth the quarreling of the people of the fire they'll be even quarreling there even fighting there even thinking um, you know, why is so-and-so not in hell? Why are we in hell? And so on. So there's there's always this disturbance, this confusion in hell. May Allah make us of those who realize the truth in this world and are guided by Allah in this world. And may Allah not ever take us to a place where there is total chaos. Ameen. Let's look at Surah Zumar, Surah number... Surah number 39, the troops or the groups. The surah was revealed in Makkah in the early stages before permission was granted to the Muslims who were being persecuted to migrate to Abyssinia. Surah Zumar, it opens with the testimony that Quran is the true revelation calling people to worship Allah alone and perform good deeds. Allah is far above having any partners. He created everything in the heavens and the earth, including their own selves. And it is not, he is not in any need of any helpers. Let's look at ayat number 23 from Surah Zumar. Allah has sent down the best statement, a book, its parts resembling each other and oft repeated. The skins of those who fear their Lord shiver from it. Then their skin and their heart soften to the remembrance of Allah. That is the guidance of Allah. As we look at Surah Zumar, ayat number 23, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that this is the best statement. And if truly we understand and read it with our hearts open and our minds open and with acceptance of this as truth what happens to us is that our skins shiver from the fear of our lord and our hearts relax to the remembrance of allah the tranquility we get from remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fear that we have in us for not upsetting him Narrated by Abdullah Razila Ta'ala Anhu, the best talk, which is the best speech, is Allah's book, the Qur'an. The best legal way for guidance is the guidance way of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The worst matters are the heresies, those new things which are introduced into the religion. And whatever you have been promised will surely come to pass and cannot escape. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 9. Hadith number 7277. Truly the messengers came to give us this warning, this beautiful good news of Allah's messages. But truly it is only Allah that guides people. It is only Allah that can give guidance. Quran Majid is such a revelation that guides towards being upright. And um, Alhamdulillah, Quran Majid guides mankind to the best of them regarding both this world and the hereafter. If one wants to know the best way of treating an issue, 
whether it has to do with beliefs or manners or deeds or politics or work or acts of worship, one simply has to go to the Quran Majid to find the best answers. Wherely, this Quran guides to that which is the most just and right. Surah Isra, Surah number 17, Ayat number 9. Also, we see in another um, surah, Surah Yunus, Surah number 10, Ayat 58, say, In the bounty of Allah and His mercy, therein let them rejoice. That is better than what the wealth they amass. Without doubt, this beautiful, noble Quran is exalted above all other books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to previous prophets. It is, after all, a miracle that will remain manifest on earth until the end of time. Al-Tafsir Al-Kabir Quran Majid is so beautifully put together by the creator of the universe. It has perfect rulings for everything. Alhamdulillah. It is full of wisdom. Allah Akbar. Truly, it is a blessed book. Truly, it is the guidance for all humanity. In Surah Isra, Surah number 17, Ayat number 88, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the English translation is, Say, if the mankind and the jinn were together to produce the like of this Quran, they could not produce the like thereof, even if they helped one another. So, Allah wa akbar, there is nothing comparable to the Quran in the least. Alhamdulillah, it is being guarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. These, this, these are his words. This is the creator of the universe's guidance. This is Ar-Rahman giving us the Quran. Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Quran. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should value this book, that we should value these messages that we should try to understand these messages and try to implement them in our lives. Ameen. Let's look at ayat number 27 of Surah Zumar, also about Quran Majid. And indeed, we have put forth for men in this Quran every kind of similitude in order that they may remember. Allahu Akbar. And so we see, alhamdulillah, that the majestic lord of ours our rahman our rahim our allah al khaliq alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin cares for humanity cares for all his creation and so he sent us the biggest gift this gift of the quran majid narrated by abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there was no prophet among the prophets but was given miracles because of which people had security or had belief. But what I have been given is divine revelation, which Allah has revealed to me. So I hope that my followers will be more than those of any other prophet on the day of resurrection. Recorded in Sahih Bukhari, volume 9, hadith number 7274. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us towards understanding this beautiful kalam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to always hold on fast to this Quran, the glorious Quran. Ameen. Jazakumullah khairan kaseeran everyone for listening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, guide you, keep you safe always. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu